So this is a true story. So um, when I was about 17 years old, I was the maid of honor in a wedding at my dad's church. And that's a little bit young to be a maid of honor, but I was chosen, so I was the maid of honor. And the dress we had to wear was powder blue, which now is back. And back when I, when I was the bridesmaid, you know, that was in then, and it went out, and then it came back in, you know. And it was one of those dresses kind of looking like a Georgia peach bell of the ball kind of dress. And it had huge puffy sleeves. And I wish I had a picture. I don't. And I don't know the people anymore that I was a, a bridesmaid in their wedding. I think they just picked me because my dad was the pastor. Anyway, it was a preposterous looking dress, but... You know, I was a lot smaller and the dress was, you know, fluffy and whatever. But on the top here, there was lace, a very, very modest dress. And you, the lace was so thick, you could barely see any skin. But my mother had them, a seamstress, covered the lace part of the dress with a, a piece of solid fabric so you couldn't see any skin. So imagine in the 100 degree Trinidad weather, probably hotter, middle of the day, hot sun wedding, choker neck, blue organza dress with no lace. Well, there's lace, but you can't see it because there's the solid blue underneath the lace so it's not to show any skin. And puffy sleeves and the dress went all the way to the ground. Yep, that's what I wore in the name of modesty because apparently showing a little bit of your chest skin through lace was a no-no, a complete no-no. And now my mom had that done not because she thought that was immodest, but maybe because she thought my dad as the pastor wouldn't want me to dress in a way that any skin showed. But it really was a little bit extreme, don't you think? I don't know how you grew up and what kind of, if you're a Christian, what kind of environment um, modesty look like to you. But right now when you're scrolling through Instagram or you're looking at any kind of social media platform and you see women, you know, showing off their, their fashion, their style, their whatever, can you tell which ones are Christians and which are not? I mean... Is there any way to differentiate between a Christian and a non-Christian? Maybe a better question is this. Should we be able to differentiate between a Christian and a non-Christian by the way they dress? That's what we're going to talk about today for a little bit on the Preacher Girl podcast. My name is Pastor Sharo, just Sharo, and I pastor a really amazing church called Hope NYC in Queens, New York. And I'm also the person that started this particular vlog and podcast called Preacher Girl TV. Thank you for being here. If you enjoy this podcast, leave a comment, like this video, um, share it on your social media platform. Please let somebody know and please subscribe to the Preacher Girl TV channel. We appreciate that so much because we talk about things that matter, including should you be able to tell that someone is a Christian or should you be able to differentiate between Christian and non-Christian by the way they dress? I would love to hear your comments on this matter. But today I want to give you five reasons which um, I believe are proof, biblical reasons why as a woman of God, there are certain things we just should not wear and definitely shouldn't wear publicly. Um, what you wear in the privacy of your home with your spouse is different from what you wear outside or where when you're among people and let me give you the, the my end before the beginning let me tell you what I think should you be able to differentiate between a Christian a believer and a non-believer in Jesus by the way they dress my answer is yes you should be able to differentiate but it should not be the only differentiator it's not the most important difference, but it's definitely supposed to be different. More important than what you look like and what you're wearing is the content, the content of your heart, is the attitude of your spirit. God looks at the heart and man looks at the outward appearance. When the Bible says that, <clears throat> it's not trying to say that the outward doesn't matter. It's saying that while the outward matters more to mankind, the inward matters more to God. But it doesn't mean that the outward doesn't matter. 
right? So I think the bridesmaid story was a little bit extreme. I'm telling you the things growing up I had to wear. We couldn't wear pants. I couldn't wear shorts as a child. We were wearing skirts, denim skirts in the hot weather. Couldn't cut your hair. Couldn't wear any makeup, no jewelry. It was really a whole system of itself that was very uncomfortable for a young person growing up. But now I see people wearing things like hijabs and and um, things like like um, long long dresses and wigs and 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 all kinds of additions and accoutrements and and attachments. You know, you girls know what a faha is, right? Most of you probably have one. That is the most uncomfortable contraption ever invented. Yet, in order to get a certain kind of body, people wear that. The same people who will, in the next breath, wear nothing and say it's too hot. It's just weird, right? It's different. It doesn't make any common sense. So here are five reasons which I think really gives us biblical authority and biblical premise to dress differently as a woman of God. I got allergies acting up today, so pardon me while my voice sounds like a frog. Anyway, so the first reason is to honor God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, you know what it says. It says, do you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That to me is the most important and maybe the most valuable expression of your body to honor God. And there's just a way where if you are exposing parts of your body, if you are using your body to attract attention instead of an honoring God, if you're using your body, if you stand in front of the mirror and you dress with intent for someone to look on you with lust or affection or envy or even, I don't know, surprise, appreciation, whatever it is, you you want to dress sensually or sexually or or alluringly, then those things are not honoring God. It's the opposite of honoring God. So if your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we use it to honor God, then what we put on it must honor God. And you might say, well, what I wear doesn't dishonor or honor God. And the, the, the truth of the matter is, it probably does. There are tr- religions in the world, and I do not, I'm not comparing apples to oranges here, but there are religions like Islam, for instance, Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, um, certain sects of Hinduism, where, where I should say certain sectors of Hinduism, in case YouTube flags that word as a word I didn't say, um, that people are covered, women are covered from head to toe. Why? Because modesty is a part of the culture there. But yet as Christians, we are so pushing hard against modesty that we will let anything fly. You know, sometimes we go to youth events and not so much here in New York. I haven't seen that. But when I lived in Texas, it was absolutely preposterous what the young ladies would wear to youth camp right? Chair shorts where butt cheeks are hanging out. And even now in Long Island, in New York, I see young ladies, 13, 14, 15 years old, going to school like that, you know, where half of their anatomy is literally exposed. And these are children driving, you know, walking down the street where men and women are driving up and down. And I wonder, where are your moms? Where are your parents? Do they know that you're out there on the street like that? You know, but when I see somebody dressed like that, it's not judgment. It's not me saying they're not Christian, but it's me not automatically assuming that they are, right? And 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 it's and I don't know if anybody automatically assumes that they are. I know that when they got dressed this morning, their intent was not to cover up. Their intent was to see how much, how little they can wear and still cover the bare necessities, right? And so I don't know if that is a testament of honor to God. To honor means to show respect. To honor means to give due laud and appreciation. To honor means to treat with dignity. And 
I don't, one of the postures of honor in Christianity is the kneel and the bowing. And if your shorts are so short, or if you, you wear a skirt that you continually have to pull down, I, I am pretty sure bowing is out of the question. I'm pretty sure bowing down before the Lord or, or kneeling is not something you can easily do without completely being exposed. And so I think a really good measure of honor is can you, uh, can you appropriate the posture? Can you take up the position of worship comfortably in the garment that you're wearing and not have to be self-conscious about it, right? So that's one. Number two, you dressed you dress modestly to in, to reflect an inner godliness. So this is this is a good one because people say it's not what the, what's on the outside, it's what's on what's on the inside. But according to First Timothy two nine to ten, hear what it says: Women should dress modestly with decency and propriety, propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles and gold and pearls and expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who say they worship God. And so this one says that if you're saying you're a worshiper of God, if you're saying that that your heart and your life is to worship the Lord, then your outward dress should reflect that. It should reflect not only a um, a, a kind and a and a worshipful, honorable attitude, but your outward dress should show propriety. It should show that you're not you know, into extravagantly adorning your own body, but your spirit is more adorned. Um, when this message, this, this letter was written to Timothy by Paul, what was going on was that the church there was just gold. It was just opulence and the wealth and, and the demonstration of wealth. And it is a, really a way of showing off, you know, today in our world is you wear your Gucci and you wear your, your, your Fendi and, and the brands and the bigger the brand. If you can wear Balenciaga, then we know how rich you are or you, rich you're pretending to be. And this is what God is saying. He's saying that women, uh, what Paul was trying to say here was that women should reflect an inner beauty. They shouldn't need the fancy hairstyle or the, the, the gold and the jewelry and, and, and all this thing. And you might say, but Pastor Shari, you're wearing hoops. Well, uh, yeah, these are gold. Um, these are $10 hoops. Not that if you had real gold hoops, you know, that it would be worse. I'm just saying, it's not saying you shouldn't, you can't wear earrings or you can't braid your hair. That wasn't the point. That was, a, what, what he's saying is, don't let your beauty depend on these things, on the baubles. When people see you coming, the the gold and the silver and the brands and the 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 demonstration of your worldly wealth shouldn't be what people see first. They should see the demonstration of your wealthy spirit, the demonstration of the richness of the mercy of God that is in you. When people leave your company, what are they thinking? Wow, she sure had a nice outfit. Or are they thinking, wow, she really is a lover of God. She really is a daughter of the Most High. Number three. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever dressed in a way that caused someone in the spirit to stumble? Have you ever dressed knowing or, if we get real honest, hoping that somebody would look at you and want you? Not anybody in particular, just anybody. You're going out at night with the girls or you're, you're, you're going to a party or something and you pick the smallest thing or the most exposed thing. And, and, and this is what it says in Romans 14, 13, hear this. It says, let us stop judging one another, but instead make up your mind not to put a stumbling block or an obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. Now hear this. This is such good advice. Stop passing judgment on other people. So I'm not here to say, look at her causing him to lust. I'm just here to make sure that I'm not causing my brother or sister to, some, to stumble. You know, it, it's important to me, not just for myself as a woman of God, but when a girl wears a thong to the beach, right? First of all, girls... It's the most uncomfortable 
Well, except the faha, piece of clothing you can wear, right? What is the reason to make sure your tan is even? What is the, what really, to make sure that seawater touches as much of your body as possible? These are the real questions. What is our motive behind what we're wearing? And if it is to cause someone to stumble, and what is a stumble in the spirit? What is stumble in the Bible? It means to lust, to sin by lusting. Because Jesus said, if you've committed a sexual sin with somebody in your mind, you've already committed that sin. It's the same as. So if you dress in a way to cause somebody to think about you in a sexual manner, sensually, then you have been the cause of your brother to stumble. Now, there are some men who will stumble if you're wearing a potato sack or women as well. In the world that we live in, you never know who's stumbling, right? Uh, or you, they might be attracted to something that's completely not your fault and that's not you causing them to stumble. And I need you to know the difference. The word cause there, causative, that word cause means it was your fault. You intentionally assigned this to happen. You were the reason, right? Now, if somebody stumbles because of you, with you without malintent, with you, and, and, and this is not you putting on this skimpy little yellow polka dot bikini and thinking, oh, I hope somebody lusts and goes to hell. That's not what this is. That's not even the thought that's being portrayed here. The thought is, ask yourself when you do go to the beach, what, what's the reason for this particular outfit? You know, is, is this my way of drawing attention to my body? Is this my way of getting compliments, of having men watch me or women watch me on the beach and, and long or want or desire or have some kind of carnal ambition towards my body. And if that's it, then you know you have gone into the, the, the area of sin, right? And so as Christian women, I think that when we dress, we dress in a way as so as not to cause somebody to stumble. And I know there are women who are going to jump on here and get upset at me and even men and say, well, who are you to talk about that? And, and what about this? And what about that? And this is not me arguing with you. You are entitled to your own opinion. You can tell me that when you wore that thong bikini, you weren't thinking about anybody and you did it because you wanted to I don't know. People say they do it to make themselves feel better. My opinion, I mean, my opinion is mine. And I know that those things are not comfortable anyway. <laughs> so I don't know how that, you know, but like I said, to each his own, this is not me imposing values on you. This is me telling you what the scripture says and knowing people the way they are, knowing the way people think, knowing what people are looking at, looking for, and you conforming to that desire, conforming to that society's stature. You know, if this, this decade, it's been tiny waist, big butts. The decade before that, it was or three or four decades before that, it was a no buts, tiny ways. And then, and then you know, it's then the decade of before that, it was big boobs and small but I don't know. But if you are jumping on every bandwagon to try to fit into these molds of what society says sexy looks like, then maybe, then maybe it's your causing it. Maybe you're doing that with intention. Now, you might say, well, I'm doing that, but I'm doing that for my husband or I'm doing that for my, you know, self, which is what most women say today. I'm doing it so I look good to myself when I stand in front of the mirror. And my real question to you is, or another question to you is, why couldn't you feel good about yourself if you didn't look like that? If you just look like the way that you were created to be or the way that your choices have caused you to be. And then if you don't like what you look like, then start living a lifestyle, living the lifestyle that will encourage you to feel good about yourself. Really, not so much in the outer man, but in the inner man. If we continue to make the choices that add to us not feeling good about ourselves and not looking the way we want to look, then it, again, the cause, it, it firmly lies within you and within me. But I'm here just to tell you the scriptural reasons so the, uh, to avoid causing others to stumble. The next one, to demonstrate humility, it's in 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4 says, 
Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as hairstyles and here's the, excuse me, hairstyles, gold jewelry, fine clothes. But it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. An important concept in this, which is what uh, the, the Apostle Paul is saying, he's saying to God, the beauty is not the hair, the jewelry and the makeup and the blah, blah, blah. None of those things are beautiful to God. What God sees as beautiful is your inner gentle, gentleness, your inner beauty, your quiet nature, the self in you. That's what God appreciates and sees. And in this world that we live in, it's really obvious that people don't really care too much about what God loves about them. They care more about what people love about them. We, we put way more effort and time into training this thing, feeding it, clothing it. And I'm talking about the body, painting it and, and adorning it than we do adorning our spirit, feeding our spirit, clothing our spirit, the parts of us that God loves. We don't practice humility and practice gentleness as much as we practice an eyeshadow look, you know, and this is not me dogging people who love makeup. You know, I love the artistry of makeup myself. But some people, it's not makeup. But they're consistently and forever on a diet of a different kind. So they become a slave to a diet. And why? Because the body that, that they're seeing is not the one they want. Spending more time focusing, anxious about it, and that kind of thing. And this is what God says. He says, you dress in a way that you demonstrate, you you. The hum humility and the humbleness that you have inside of you shows on the outside of you. And it's really, you know, when the rings are massive and the, the, the hair is, you know, the extensions go on forever and, and the, the, everything is on point. And the last thing, the last thing anybody thinks is what a humble person Right? That doesn't mean that somebody wearing a big ring can't be humble. Of course they can. But you can't know that by looking. You know that when you talk to them, when you spend time with them, when you get to know them. Because it's what's on the inside that shows that humility, which is one of the traits that God loves because the Bible said he resists the proud. Right? And the last one. First Thessalonians 4, 3 and 4. To maintain self-control. It says it is God's will that you should be sanctified and avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. And so self-control is also demonstrated by the things we wear. Some people have no control in what they eat. They can't help themselves. They've lost the ability to control that part of self. Similarly, some people have lost the ability to control themselves and what they wear. Right. And as women of God, I think we should demonstrate self-control in every area of our lives. What we think, what we do, what we eat, what we wear, what we say. Right. And so what we wear also comes, you know, into the forefront here because um, self-control might be the control of what you buy, what you purchase. You know how funny it is to me that when we watch advertising or when we watch, you know, something on on um, social media that shows an outfit on someone's body, we kind of think we would look like that. Realistically, we won't look like that. Most of us do not look like models. We do not have the body that the person on the picture in the photo is looking like what we think and imagine that we would. Look at that deception. And then when we buy it and put it on, it looks completely different. And then we blame the manufacturer. Sometimes it's their fault. But really and truly, it's that we did not even know our own bodies enough to know that this is not me. This is not going to look good. This is going to look like garbage on me. So all of these scriptures, these are just five. But these are five important ones, not for everyone. But for those of you who really want to live for Jesus, you really want to demonstrate Christ, you, it is important to you that not only do you say you're a Christian, but you live a Christian life, that now more than ever, you got Muslims out there wearing their hijab proudly because they are proud to be Muslim, but nobody wants to be proud enough to be a Christian by dressing modestly as one of the aspects of a Christian woman. Isn't that weird? that we as Christian women want to fight for the right to dress immodestly. And we use God's grace as the reason 
So this is my admonition to all of us to check ourselves whenever we're getting dressed, whenever we're picking out clothes, whenever we're we're putting something on our bodies. We ask ourselves, does this honor God? You know, do I feel like this is dishonorable to God? And if it is, I'm not going to wear it. Two, is this reflecting the inner godliness in me? Is what I'm wearing reflecting that that I am a believer in Jesus Christ, that the Spirit of God lives in me. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Three, is what I'm wearing going to cause somebody to stumble by choice? Am I doing this so that someone is going to lust? Someone is going to desire me in a way that they shouldn't be desiring me? Four, does this outfit demonstrate a humble spirit? You know, and I know that, you know, you get a gift from a loved one or you get a gift from, from your spouse and it's expensive and, and you want to wear that. And that's different. That's not showing off. You know, sometimes it can be, of course. But if you wear it because you love the person that gave it to you or, or you really love the gift and are appreciative of it and it looks good, that's different than you wear it so everyone can see it and remark that you can afford something like that. It's different. So ask yourself, is it a demonstration of humility or is it a demonstration of pride? And five, to maintain your own purity and your own self-control. Just like sometimes you got to say no to the the second slice of cake, sometimes the first. You got to say no to the thing that you want to wear because of all the other reasons. And because this temple is so worth it. This temple is a is a tool, even this, for the kingdom of God and the glory of God and the reflection of the image of God. And therefore, as we steward it, we want to make sure that we use it in a way that is pleasing to God. So let's see how far is too far. Preacher girls, what are your thoughts on tube tops? You know, just the bando. What are your thoughts on those? One one person wrote and said, "You they think that women should wear turtlenecks, maxis, with long sleeves all the time. I do not agree. But what are your thoughts? You know, and then somebody else wrote in, in a past podcast and said, women should always cover their heads. Like, you know, the hijab is appropriate for a Christian woman. I also do not agree. Right? What are your thoughts? Um, talk to me about swimsuits. Is it appropriate at the beach? I'm from a Caribbean island. We've gone to the beach since we were babies. You know, a swimsuit wasn't something to go show off and walk on the beach. We literally go in the water and swim. We don't, you know, we're not layout sunbathers, right? So so until I, I, I actually came here and started watching shows on TV like Baywatch, I didn't even realize that a swimsuit was actually something you're supposed to model in. You know, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, How short are short shorts? Are short shorts okay? I'd love to hear your thoughts, preacher girls, on all of this. Because, you know, we have a responsibility to God, but also to one another. Let us reason together and let us talk about it. What do you feel? You know, this is, I want to leave you with this this thought. I've always told um, the young people in my church, that there are some people when they wear a pair of shorts to go on a hike or to go on a mission strip or something like that, they may look amazing. They're, you know, it's covered, it's modest. And you know that not once by looking at this young lady was she thinking, I hope that boys will look at my butt. But then someone else may wear the same thing. And the way they wear it, the height at which they pull it up, the I don't know if you guys know, but apparently these days, if your pants are in your butt crack, it's attractive. I don't know. You know, people have changed. But you can tell almost, I don't know if everybody's like this, it was just me, with the same outfit, the different in the difference in the motive. Have you noticed that? If you have, drop a comment. Let me know what are your thoughts on all of these things when it comes to dressing. And one more for the for good measure. What about really expensive shoes? Ask Christian, should we wear them? What do you think? Well, preacher girls, I want you to know that if God called you, no one can uncall you. And if you know, you know that you've been called by God, and we all have, by the way, You don't need a pulpit 
to do what he called you to do. You just need a message. I love you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.